Recording has already started. We shall now begin the lecture. Today, we're going to talk about enterprise risk management. It's enterprise risk management. Okay? So we have to define risk for, uh, in the start before we can have a meaningful discussion of what enterprise risk management is all about. Enterprise risk. What is enterprise risk? Enterprise risk is the probability that the future earnings or the cash flows of the organization, the enterprise or the company, will be lower than expected, or it would result to a loss. I would like you to imagine it this way. Imagine yoga ganito. This is your expectation about the movement of earnings from year one to year two. Okay? The probability that the future earnings or cash flows will be lower than expected, or worse, nagaroon pa ng loss, okay? It will not reach this point, magiging mas mababa siya. That is what risk is all about, okay? So, the very general definition of risk is that it is the likelihood of a deviation from expectation. But in the context of an enterprise, the company as a whole, we're going to define expectations as your future earnings or cash flows. No? Your expected future earnings or cash flows will not be met. Ang inaalala natin ay magiging mas mababa siya kaysa sa expectation. Enterprise risk is the probability that future earnings or cash flows will be lower than expected or it would result to a loss. Other literature would define it this way. It is a condition that may prevent the company from achieving its objective. The condition that may prevent the company from achieving its objective. In other words, hindi mamimit yung target. So basically, the meaning of risk is just contextualized in the company as a whole. No? Contextualized for the point of view of the company as a whole. Enterprise risk. The probability that future earnings or cash flows will be lower than expected or worse would result to a loss. Broadly speaking, it's the condition that may prevent the company from achieving its objective. Okay, let's talk about the types of risk. There is what we call a hazard risk, risk that is brought to us by a natural disaster. Then we also have strategic risk, risk involved in planning and strategy decisions. This is usually faced by the top management of the entire company, no? strategic risk. Capital adequacy risk, this is the risk that, that we will not be able to meet our promises to our depositors. Capital adequacy risk is from the point of view of a bank or some other similar financial institution. I hope that by this time, you are able to watch my video lecture on capital adequacy ratio. No? Capital adequacy risk is the risk involved in being unable to protect their depositors. No? Then you have operational risk. Operational risk can mean either of the three. Definition number one, operational risk can mean the use of fixed costs. This is more popularly known as operational leverage or operating leverage. Operational risk is the risk involved in using fixed costs, also known as operational leverage. If you use fixed costs, Small percentage changes in your sales would lead to greater percentage changes in your EBIT. Konting baba lang ng sales, sobrang laki na ng pagbagsak ng EBIT mo, ng operating profit mo. The second definition of operational risk is the, use, uh, the risk of failed internal processes, especially internal control. No? The risk that would result from failed internal processes. This is the second definition. Pag silent yung problem, gamitin nyo yung second definition. No? The risk involved due to failure in the 
businesses or the company as a whole's internal processes, especially the internal control. Operational risk may also encompass the following third definition. It may encompass legal risk, compliance risk, and political risk. Among these three definitions, the most common is the risk associated with failed internal processes. Kapag silent, yan yung tinutukoy na operational risk. Financial risk is the inability to finance the business. This involves liquidity and solvency risk. Liquidity is for the short term, inability to pay short term obligations. Solvency risk, inability to pay long term obligations. So yun yung mga financial risk natin. Okay lang? Yun yung mga financial risk natin. Okay. I'll give you two minutes to answer this one. Which of the following statements is correct? Which of the following statements is correct? Go. Okay, very good. May nag-start na. Enter your answers, please. Enter your answers, please. Everyone, please enter your answers. Which of the following statements is correct? The correct answer here is letter boy. The longer the time it takes to finish something, the higher the chance that it will not happen. An increase in the time to receive regulatory approval for a merger increases the risk of the merger. Maliki ang chance na hindi mangyayari ang merger kapag pinapatagal yung regulatory approval. Ay ayaw i-approve no ang tagal. There is a greater chance aatras yung merger. Isa sa kanila aatras sa merger. Having a guaranteed wage rate for employees decreases the risk as compared to paying prevailing market wage rates for employees. You can think of this guaranteed wage rate as a forward contract. Kinontrata mo na na yung wage rate is $5 per hour. No? Just an example. Magawin natin 15, no? $15 per hour. Kinontrata niya na yung wage rate is around $15 per hour. Okay? If you already know that it's $15 per hour, you do not need to worry about the wage rate na established na. It will not go higher than that. However, when you will use the prevailing market wage rates, Kahit mas mababa pa yan, currently, baka mamaya in the future, a month from now, biglang tumaas ng $5. No? From $12, naging $17 na yung wage rate. Mas maganda yon kapag kinontrata na sa umpisa. Think of this as a future contract, as a forward contract. You already fixed the price. When you fix the price, alam mo na kung ano yung magiging gastos mo. Tama ba? Your risk will go lower. Okay, so your variable rate is already known. It's less risky than when you still do not know it. Correct answer is letter boy. Very good, everyone. One minute for this one. Which of the following actions is most likely to increase the risk of loss due to high operating leverage? One minute. Go.
Odin. Enter everyone. Enter now, everyone. Please enter. Which of the following actions is most likely to increase the loss due to high operating leverage? Okay, high operating leverage is determined by the level of fixed cost. Okay, very good. The answer is dog. Increasing the salary, which is the fixed cost, will increase your operating leverage. Walang kang benta, kailangan mo magbayad ng sahod. When you reduce the commission rate paid to the sales staff, ang maganda sa operating leverage, when things are going great, it will be greater for you. When the sales are going up, yung pambayad mo sa mga agents mo ay fix na lang. Sa na lahat ng kita. Nakuha niyo? But when things are going down, it's actually risk. No? It's really high risk. Risk of loss due to high operating leverage. Wala kang benta, mataas pa rin gastos mo. That happens when you increase the salary, which is a fixed cost, to replace the commission rate. No? Sabihin mo, ay, taasan ko ang sahod nyo, bawasan ko yung commission. Paano kung walang benta? Kawawa ka. The company will suffer a loss. Correct answer is letter dog. Very good so far. Everyone, tumatama naman. Which of the following is an example of political risk? Political risk. Go. Okay, ang bilis, no? So, which of the following is an example of a political risk? Letter A. Okay, letter A will result to forex risk, no? Foreign exchange risk. Okay? Pinaka nakakatakot dito yung boy, yung dependent ka sa gobyerno. Having government contracts be responsible for a relatively high percentage of the company's revenue. That's uh, subject to political risk. When your main customer is the government, anytime na hindi mo kasundo yung politiko, pwede kang tanggalin. Okay? Kahit pa sabihin nila na, ay, nagbidding naman tayo. Okay. That's not as simple as that. Political risk arises from government action. No? Any risk associated with government action. Pwede ka mawala ng kita dahil sa ginawa ng gobyerno. Kinuha ng gobyerno yung assets mo. Okay? Having government contracts be responsible for a relatively high percentage of a company's revenue. A is forex risk. Boy is financial leverage risk. No? Financial risk. Letter dog, internal to, no? so operational risk. Letter boy is an example of a political risk. We'll give you 30 seconds for this one. Which of the following situations best describes business risk? What situation now would describe business risk? Enter now. Enter your answer is now. Business risk is the risk that you're not going to earn a profit or your profit is lower than expected. No? It's basically the definition of enterprise risk. No? Business risk is that your earnings or cash flow will be lower than expected or worse, it will be a loss. Sales revenue not meeting expectations due to demand being lower than expected. This would result to a lower profit. Lower sales, lower profit, or worse, you will incur a loss. 
operate at a loss. That is business risk. Sa business risk, hindi pa kasama dyan yung financial risk. Assuming wala ka pang utang. May utang ka man o wala, it doesn't matter. Okay? Huwag niyong isama yung risk associated sa utang. Exclude financial risk. Any risk exposure that you have, that your EBIT will be lower than expected or become uh, loss, no? yung, earning, yung EBIT mo magiging loss. That is a business risk. Letter A. Next. Another one minute. Which of the following statements about foreign currency is true concerning financial risks? Which of the following statements about foreign currency is true concerning financial risks? Okay, 30 seconds more. Okay, enter your answer is now. Okay. Pagdating sa financial risk, minsan kasama dyan yung foreign risk. In both cases, you are the payer or the payee. If it involves currency other than your own, you are subject to foreign exchange risk or forex risk, which is sometimes considered under financial risk. Accepting payments in foreign currency, baka mamaya bumaba yung foreign currency. Value niya. Making purchases in foreign currency, paano kung tumaas yung value ng foreign currency? Both cases increases forex risk, which is broadly associated with financial risk. Correct answer is letter A. Very good everyone. I can see na tama talaga ang mga sinasagot niyo. Another one minute for this one. Follow the hierarchy. Kapag silent, anong definition yung susundin nyo? We'll give you one minute. Go. Okay. Which of the following is an example of an operational risk? Kapag silent, dun tayo sa failed internal process. Correct answer is letter. Talk. An employee accidentally emailing salary data throughout the company. Yung letter A kasi, naintindihan ko naman kayo, no? Kahit pa paano yung truck, uh, aksidente yan, no? More of hazard na to, yung letter A. This is insurable. Usually, yung insurable risk, they are called hazard risk, no? Together with the natural disasters. So, although this is not natural, letter A, kahit pa paano, kahawig niya yung hazard risk, no? Getting into an accident and destroying the products. While an employee accidentally emailing salary data throughout the company, Nagalit, nag-away-away mga empleyado dahil dito, hindi na sila nagkakatiwalaan. Uh, letter dog, this is due to failed internal process. Hindi gumana yung internal control mo. Yung employee nag-email ng sensitive info sa buong company. Correct answer is letter dog. Correct answer is letter dog. Okay?
marami sa inyo sumagot ng A, the answer is dog. Okay? Ang question na to, hindi ako nag-a-agree. Uh, no? Hindi naman capital adequacy yung nasa choices. Anyway, the question is, which of the following statement is true? Which of the following statement is true? Okay. One minute. Everyone, please answer. Everyone, please enter. Go. So, which of the following is a true statement? Hindi naman to capital adequacy. This is more of financial leverage. No? So, among the choices, the correct answer is C. Very good. A bank's ability to pay a mortgage on its building over the life of the mortgage. Solvency issue yon. Long-term ability to pay obligations. Ability to pay employee wages, which is due in the next 15 to 30 days. And salaries, this is a liquidity issue. So short-term viability is liquidity. Long-term viability is a solvency issue. The correct answer is C. Very good, everyone. Correct answer is C, huh? Very good, everyone. How about this one? How about this one? Okay, I will no longer emphasize this as I already told you how to calculate the expected value um, during our risk and return calculations, no? how to calculate the expected value. Expected loss from this product recall, you take each possible loss, multiply them by the likelihood or weight no? or percentage of probability, the chance that they will happen. 300k times 0. 0.7 plus 900k times 0. 0.25 plus 1.8 million times 0. 0.05. The correct answer is letter boy, $525,000. $525,000. Huh? How about this one? Tama yung boy, ha? Huh? How about this one?
Okay, this is an easy one. The correct answer is E. $730,000 na discuss na natin ito. No? Yung general, uh, general definition ng expected value, just contextualize it in calculating the losses. No? Contextualize it in calculating expected loss. Okay? 100K times 0.3, 600K times 0.5, 2 million times 0.2. $730,000. Letter A. Okay. Next. To assist in an investment decision, give company selected the most likely sales volume from several possible outcomes. Which of the following attributes would that selected sales volume reflect? Okay. I will give you one minute go. Okay. Everyone, please enter your answers. Everyone, please enter your answers. Ano ang sagot nyo? Okay. Mag-ingat kayo. No? Kapag sinabi the most likely sales volume, you are not going to use probabilities. The most likely sales volume will involve, pag sinabing most likely, it will involve what we call a deterministic approach. You will ignore other possible outcomes and focus on what is likely. For example, dito, ano yung most likely outcome? Although the expected value is $730,000, the most likely outcome is $600,000. When you ignore other scenarios and focus only on assuming that what will happen is the most likely outcome, you are not using a probabilistic approach. You are using a deterministic approach. Okay? So kapag most likely sales volume, ginagamit nyo, gagamitin nyo yung item na may greatest probability. Yun yung most likely sales volume. Ulitin ko. Itong calculation ng expected value, this is a probabilistic approach. 100K times 0.3, 600K times 0.5, 2 million times 0.2. The expected value is $730,000. We call that the probabilistic approach. But if you will be deterministic, you follow the deterministic approach, you only focus on the scenario with the highest chance of happening. Sana malinaw, ha? That's the deterministic approach. So yung question dito, paano daw kapag most likely sales volume yung ginagamit, ang tawag dyan deterministic approach, titignan mo yung may greatest probability. At you work around, no? And you are going to work around the assumption that the one with the greatest probability is the one that will happen. Letter C. I hope that's clear. Okay, how about this one? How about Please enter your answers. Please enter your answers. 
as I have told you, financial risk broadly includes forex risk. So financial risk can be caused by fluctuations in exchange rates. Meanwhile, operational risk can be caused by using variable rate debt to finance operations. Hindi ka nag-fix ng interest rate, kundi ang ginaga... Ah, sorry. Sorry, hindi pala ito, no? This is still a uh, financial risk, no? This is still financial risk. Okay? Itong using the variable debt to finance operation, hindi ka nag-fix ng interest expense, this is operational risk. So, letter boy is half true, yung una lang. Yung pangalawa, mali. Okay? The correct answer is C. Operational risk can be caused by the lack of effective internal controls. Financial risk can be caused by fluctuations in exchange rates. Okay? So, ulitin ko ha. Financial risk can broadly include forex risk. Operational risk when silent means failed internal processes like lack of effective internal control. So, for this answer, for this question, the answer is letter C. Answer is letter C. Okay. How about this one? Which of the following is an action that will decrease financial risk? I will give you a minute. Enter your answers, everyone. Enter your answers, everyone. Please enter, everyone. Okay. Financial risk arises when there's a low chance that you will survive because you're not going to pay your obligations to your debt holders. Okay? So, letter A, this is an internal issue, operational risk. Letter DOG is about operating leverage. Letter C is about liquidity. Okay? But this will decrease your liquidity. No, This will increase the risk. A and DOG pertains to a different kind of risk. Letter C is for liquidity, but it will but it will worsen the situation. We are looking for the action that will decrease financial risk. Letter C kasi nag -i increase siya ng financial risk, no? Kulang yung cash niya. Correct answer is, boy, establishing a sinking fund for bond repayment. In a sinking fund, you allot an amount for your future bond repayments. So kung next year meron kang mga interest payment at merong portion ng principal magmamature, dapat nakaredy na. No? By the time na babayaran mo yung buong maturity, kailangan mong bayaran ng buo, you already have a ready what we call sinking fund. No? Establishing a sinking fund for bond repayment is an example of what a company can do to increase the chance of good payment. No? Letter boy. How about this one? How about this one?
everyone. Please enter everyone. Not an action that will reduce operational risk. Not an action that will reduce operational risk. We are looking for that item. Okay. Letter A, restructuring a contract with a delivery company. One where the company pays per delivery to one where the company pays a monthly fixed fee, receives unlimited deliveries for a month. Nako, letter A, tataas yung operational leverage mo dito. Letter A, you substitute a variable cost with a fixed cost, thereby increasing your operational leverage your operating leverage. Yung variable cost, ginawa mong fixed cost. Hindi ka na nagbabayad bawat delivery, pero kahit wala kang delivery, kailangan mong magbayad ng fix for the entire month. Okay? So in that case, letter A, this is an example of more operating leverage. Okay? Letter boy, instituting a more rigorous training program. Okay, para sa ating computers. Okay, computer personnel. This will reduce your operational risk. Requiring IDs. Okay, reduce your theft probability. Uh, unauthorized passing, no? Reducing operational risk. Okay, letter dog. This will reduce your operational leverage. Marami kasing meaning ng operational risk, no? It can mean the internal process like boy and C, or it can mean operating leverage like letter dog. Okay? How about this one? How about this one? Okay, everyone, please answer. Everyone, please answer. A large multinational company currently has its IT department located in Germany. In order to reduce the risk of system failure, the company has decided to split up the IT department into two geographically separate locations. Okay, new location in Singapore. The company still can face catastrophic system failure. But the risk will be greatly reduced. Ang nangyayari ito, kunyari kapag may earthquake sa isang lugar, at least, functioning pa yung ibang lugar mo. The risk that remains after the company sets up the second IT department in Singapore is best described as, okay, uh, merong inherent risk ang mga bagay. But when you do something in order to in order to counteract that risk, no? if you respond to a risk by taking some action to mitigate the risk, what remains is still risk. No? Meron pa rin risk maiiwan. Konti na lang. We call that residual risk. Residual risk is the risk that remains after taking action. Okay? You did something to mitigate the risk, meron pa rin naiwan. Ano yung naiwan? Yung residue. 
residual risk. Correct answer is boy. Very good. Okay. What are the possible responses that we can take for managing risk? Possible responses in managing risk. Number one, we can avoid the risk. Okay? In avoiding the risk, you exit the activity. Example, meron kang product line na questionable yung components niya, yung safety niya. Meron kang produkto na questionable yung health and safety niya. What you can do is to drop the product line, exit the activity. If the risk is so much, you may decide to exit the activity. You call that risk avoidance. If it is too much. But remember that you have to take risk in life in order to prosper. Hindi naman pwedeng sabihin na, ay, ayoko ng business risk, so hindi na ako magbibusiness. Ay, ayoko bumagsak ng exam, so hindi ko na itatake yung exam. Tama ba? <laughs> ayoko bumagsak ng exam, so wag mong itake, no? Para hindi ka babagsak. Okay? Avoiding risk is not the optimal solution in most cases because you're not going to prosper without taking some managed level of risk. Another option that you can take is to risk reduce, no? Reduce the risk. You take action to minimize the chance of happening. Okay? So, kunyari, there is a chance na magiging defective yung product. Edi invest in prevention, no? Invest in training, invest in system maintenance in order to minimize the chance of some uh, defects to happen. You can reduce your risk. Or you can just accept the risk. Ah, ganun talaga. It is really that risky. May dalawang version ng acceptance. May risk acceptance na you just retain the risk. Aakuhin mo lang yung risk. Sige na, bahala na. Kung mangyari man yan, maglaan na lang ako ng pondo. I'm going to allot funds to fix something if that happens. Or you can exploit the risk. So you remember that higher risk would warrant high return? Some risk, when taken, will increase your chance of will increase your chance of earning. Kapag nagsuspeculate ka sa derivatives, ibig sabihin nun ng speculation, bumibili ka ng derivatives in a position that will expose you to high risk. If you are confident in what you're doing, you can increase your returns. Okay? So there are two versions of accepting risk. You just retain it. You just retain it. Aakuhin mo lang, or you can exploit it. Ang ibig sabihin ng risk exploitation, you increase your risk in order to increase your possible returns. Then finally, you can simply transfer your risk. The best example would be you purchase an insurance. Okay? You purchase an insurance. Ay, nakakatakot, baka mawala, malugi ako dahil masusunog yung building. Buy a fire insurance. Ay, natatakot, baka maaksidente yung kotse ko. Malulugi ako. Then buy a vehicle, you vehicle insurance. Okay? In buying an insurance, you transfer the risk of financial loss to another party, the insurance company. These are the possible responses that we can take when we face risk. Clear? Sige. Which of the following actions is most likely to reduce? A company's exposure to fluctuating prices for a material used in one of its products. Go. Okay, you would like to reduce a company's exposure to fluctuating prices for a materials used in one of its products. A, is this a good example of an action? Ending a long-term contract with the supplier, guaranteeing a given amount of raw materials at a stated price. Nako, if you're going to end this long-term contract, lalo kang ma-expose sa 
biglang pagtaas ng presyo ng materials. Ang maganda dito sa contract na to, nalilimit mo yung cost mo to a certain degree only. Okay? Ito lang yung agreed nating presyo for this quantity of materials. If you're going to end that contract, you will be exposed more to fluctuating prices. Boy, producing the product in two facilities rather than in one facility, this can reduce the risk of uh, a fire or an earthquake. Tuloy-tuloy ang production mo kahit masunog yung isa. It has nothing to do with exposure to fluctuating prices. Increasing the amount of materials used in the product will worsen your situation. Magiging dependent ka lalo sa material. If you will be more dependent to the material, you're going to be more affected here. The best thing that you can do is letter dog. Training employees so that less material is wasted in the production process. So if you're going to waste less materials, you're going to be less dependent on the material. Hindi mo kailangan bumili ng marami. Tumaas man yung presyo niya, at least konti lang yung kailangan mong bilhin. Letter dog is the best response that you can have for this situation. Letter A is the worst that you can do. And letter C, no? Letter boy, may malang yan. Wala siyang kinalaman sa case. Okay? Okay, 20 seconds for this one. When a company purchases property and casualty insurance, it is attempting to mitigate risk by practicing what kind of response? Okay, you may answer. Okay, enter. So buying an insurance is an example of a risk transfer. The correct answer is letter boy risk transfer. Next, how about this one? Which of the following actions is least likely? Least huh? to reduce a company's exposure to fluctuating prices for a material used in one of its products. Everyone, enter now. Okay, again, letter A is a good thing. You sign a long-term contract with the supplier, guaranteeing you a given amount of raw materials at a stated price. It's like a future or a forward contract, similar to a forward contract. No? Letter dog is also a good thing, training so that they will waste less materials. And letter C is a good alternative. Uh, bakit hindi mo i-avoid yung material? Using a different material in the product. No? Look for another material para hindi ka expose sa fluctuating prices ng material na to. Letter boy, as I have told you a while ago, will not help you in any way. Nako, mahal na yung presyo ng mga materials. Buti na lang, dalawa yung factory ko. Anong kinalaman nun? Again, letter boy is an action that you can take to minimize the impact of a hazard, a fire, a flood, an earthquake, kapag concentrated ka sa isang lugar, tapos nasira yung facilities mo, buong, buong uh, negosyo mo masisira. Okay? Letter boy deals with a different kind of risk. Next question. Which of the following actions is an example of risk retention? Go.
Okay. Everyone. Okay. Pag risk acceptance, inaako mo yung risk. Either inaako mo lang or pagkakitaan mo. Pag inaako mo lang, period, that's called risk retention. Pag pinagkakitaan mo yung risk, ang tawag doon, risk exploitation. So the question is an example of a risk retention. No? Which of the following actions is an example of risk retention? Inaako mo lang ng walang kapalit. The correct answer is boy. Setting cash aside on a regular basis to provide funds in case the company is sued for a hostile work environment. Okay? So, kapag merong uh, issue sa labor, tapos kailangan kasuhan, uh, kailangan kasuhan, ng kasuhan, no? kailangan mo magbayad ng attorney, nag-iipon ka na ng pera. Inaako mo yung risk. We call that risk retention. Letter boy. Next. How about this one? The KMN company sells products and services on credit and for cash. Which of the following actions taken by KMN is an example of risk sharing? Risk sharing go. Okay. Enter. The KMN company sells products and services on credit and for cash. Okay. Example of risk sharing. Meron dito risk avoidance. Letter boy is an example of risk avoidance. No? Risk avoidance. You only sell. Sorry. Letter A pala. My bad. Erase, erase. Letter A is an example of risk avoidance. You avoid credit sales. Hindi ka pumapayag ng credit sales. Baka hindi sila makapagbayad. Ang tawag dyan, risk avoidance. Okay? So, hindi ka pumapayag ng utang. You're only selling the products and services for cash. That's an example of risk avoidance. Letter A. Okay? Letter boy will worsen your situation. Gusto mo utang lahat, edi malala lalo ang lalala lalo yung risk mo. Okay? Letter C, using a third-party credit evaluation company that provides info on a customer's likelihood. Okay. This is going to increase the chance, no? That payment will be made. So this is called risk uh, minimization. Risk minimization or risk reduction. Letter C is an example of risk reduction. Risk reduction. Anyway, ano yung tanong? Ang tanong, risk sharing. Risk sharing is like a risk transfer. No? Risk sharing is like a risk transfer. Correct answer is letter dog. Using a third-party financial institution who will accept a portion of the risk of uncollectible accounts in exchange for a percentage of a credit sale. So letter dog is an example of risk sharing. Kahawig niya yung insurance. No? Very good. The answer is letter dog. Kamukha niya yung insurance, di ba? Somewhat like an insurance. Okay? How about this one? How about this one?
Everyone, please answer. The LOH company manufactures a product comprising 15% of its total sales in a country, with the government having a history of seizing assets from foreign companies. Which of the following actions taken by LOH is an example of risk avoidance? Example of risk avoidance. So, pag sinabing avoidance, you outright remove all your exposure to that kind of risk. Letter C is risk reduction. Letter dog, you are accepting more risk. No? Okay, the correct answer is A. Pag sinabing avoidance, totally ayaw mong makakuha ng ganong risk. Moving the manufacturing of the product out of the country will totally remove you from the position of being dependent on this kind of risk. Political risk, no? you may avoid it uh, by all means moving the manufacturing of the product out of the country. How about this one? Which of the following is a way a company can practice risk transfer? Enter now. Enter now. Everyone, please enter. Okay. So the best example of risk transfer is to purchase an insurance. The correct answer is letter boy. Obtaining a life insurance policy on the CEO. So imagine nyo yung Tesla o yung SpaceX. Uh, wag naman sana no, nawala agad, no? Nawala yung buhay ni ni Elon Musk, no? Huwag naman sana, no? Okay. So, delikado yon sa buong company dahil siya yung literal na tumatakbo, nagpapatakbo sa company. Hands-on siya. Okay? So, yung mga ganong klaseng CEO, maganda sana kung meron tayong insurance. Obtaining a life insurance policy on the CEO, sakaling mawala yung talent natin, meron tayong time para maghanap ng kapalit. We call that an example of risk transfer, no? obtaining a life insurance policy on the CEO. Very good. The answer is boy. Next, how about this? Enter now. Enter now. The UIO company currently pays its sales staff a combination of fixed salary and sales commissions. Which of the following actions taken by UIO would be an example of risk exploitation? Go. Everybody. Okay, so letter A is the best answer here. Reducing commissions paid to its sales staff, increasing the salaries it pays them. Pag risk exploitation, it's an example of an acceptance. You are taking in more risk. Okay, ano ang tinitake niya dito? 
more operating leverage. Okay? More operating leverage. Nagbayad lang siya ng mas maraming sahod. Bawas yung commission. Remember that between salary and commission, mas risky yung salary. Wala kang benta, magbabayad ka pa rin ng sahod. Samantalang sa commission, magbabayad ka lang kung meron kang benta. Okay? Fixed cost is riskier than a variable cost. But there is an upside to it. Meron namang benefit dito. When you invest more in fixed cost, reduce your variable cost. Kung marami ka namang benta, tiba-tibay yung kita mo. Reducing your commissions paid to its sales staff, increasing the salaries it pays to them. Is this risky? Yes. Kahit wala kang benta, magbabayad ka ng sahod. Okay? Mas malaking sahod. Pero ang kagandahan nito, kung marami kang benta, yung gagastusin mo sa kanila, bawas na. Bakit? Dahil fix yung salary. Wala masyadong commission. Okay? This is an example of risk exploitation. The correct answer here is letter A. Mas risky yung salary kaysa sa commission. Risk exploitation, you take more risk with the hope that you're going to be exposed to more profits. Letter A. One last one. Last one before we end our discussion today. Everyone, please answer. Enter now. The Benjamin Company makes 20% of its sales in a foreign currency. Which of the following actions taken by Benjamin is an example of risk exploitation? Enter your answers, everyone. Pag risk exploitation, you increase your risk with the hope that you're going to be more exposed to more returns. No? Correct answer is A. From 20%, you increase the percentage of sales in foreign currency to 40%. From 20, gawin mo 40%. Tataas yung risk level mo. Bakit mo ginagawa yon? Dahil kung mataas yung risk, mataas yung possible return. Kasi yung risk na yan, dalawang sides niyan. No? Usually, pinag-uusapan natin yung risk, yung negative side, yung down, down, downward risk. Pero kung meron namang klaseng risk na ang tawag dyan ay speculative risk, may chance na kumita ka. Okay? biglang tumaas yung currency value ng outside. No? Yung foreign currency value tumaas. E di tiba-tiba ka. No? Yung sales mo dun sa foreign currency na yon pag kinonvert sa local, tumaas lalo. So that's an example of risk exploitation. You increase your risk to uh, gain more. Okay? Uh, next meeting. Uh, Magdi-discuss ako sa next, uh, sa next uh, class, no? yung cost of framework of enterprise risk management. Okay? So I'm going to also have a recorded lecture of this. No? Okay, thank you for listening everyone. That would be all for our session today. Bye! Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, po, thank you sir. sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, po, sir.